What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for the preseason week two for the Indigo League of Legends. Uh, first up in the preseason, I'm going up against Isaiah, one of my fiercest rivals in the Indigo League of Legends. Uh, also just kind of the uh, commissioner of the League of Legends. Um, you can have him to thank for setting basically things up alongside Mac and making sure matches get done, the rules get posted, drafting gets done on time, all that good stuff is due to him. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. Now for uh, the preseason, I am again going to use this as an opportunity to get acquainted with some things I haven't used too much. Against his team in particular, I actually made a nifty chart that I'm going to be making for each individual team. I'll show you guys a little preview here where I have each team color coded and then I went through each individual type for each team and I highlighted what they're most weak to type wise. So that's just designed to kind of help structure my thinking about each team and um, help with any possible glaring weaknesses that I might overlook with my own team too. Now against Isaiah we're going to try out a double dance Rhyperior. Uh, he has basically an entire team that's hit neutrally by ground and rock and I'm not using stone if we're going to try out rock blast especially for some things that like to run substitute um, and that'll be better against Dragonite as well who has multi-scale. Break the multi-scale in the first hit then hit him with the second hit and depending on what he brings either Swords Dance or Rock Polish will be better because he has some fast Pokemon but he also has um, just some Pokemon that are just bulky and slow like Slowking and Registeel. So if I don't need the speed we can go with power. Uh, Aurorus is up next with a Choice Scarf. I really wanted to make sure I had uh, not only a check for his Talon Flame in the form of Ancient Power and pretty nice special attack but also just against the numerous ground types he has I actually think um, in the list here he doesn't have I'm sorry I was thinking of uh, Lamar's team with Isaiah's team I specifically was worried about Tornadus being annoying and then of course I get freeze drive for slow king and uh, braviary and such um, also the Sharpedo and so if he comes in with that I still have a way to hit him with plus one speed on the back end uh, if he tries to do a bulk up braviary then I can kind of blow him back with that as well Something unusual, I don't normally carry this many choice users on one team. I just wanted to see if it worked. I have Choice Spectre Galgi, Choice Bandit, Crawdont, and Choice Garf Aurorus. Uh, so this is going to be interesting. It doesn't normally work out, but we're going to give it a shot. I went with Overcoat on Fortress just so I can switch it into uh, Breloom should he decide to bring it. Uh, that's the only thing that he has that might... Um, wow, was I looking at Ramar's team again? So I don't really need, I don't need that then. I was looking at the wrong team. This is why I'm happy I have this table here handy for these types of things. So that means I don't necessarily need Overcoat and his ability. We can go with Sturdy. I still like Rocky Helmet just because it punishes his physical hits. Um, and it gives me a nice switch into Talonflame and then I can get some Rocky Helmet damage onto him on top of everything else. Um, if I'm running Charizard, I do like to run Fortress alongside it just so I can spin. Uh, with Dragalge, I did go with Specs. I gave it just a little bit of speed in case he decides to run speed. Normally our model don't really run speed, especially if he's running like a defensive rapid spinner or something like that. But uh, I wanted to have just a little bit to outspeed uh, our Maldo. And if he's trying to put speed on Kecleon, then I can outspeed that if he's a uh, lower speed tier. So just a little bit there. With um, Fortress, I decided on Spikes and Stealth Rock instead of trying to spread that out to someone else like Crustle, just because I like his typing better here. Plus, he has a lot of Pokemon that are grounded. Um, that's something else I'm going to add to this list here that I have to show how many Pokemon are weak to entry hazards and are grounded. Um, I didn't want to bring Toxic Spikes because it's very likely that he'll have Scallopede. He can send some boost around to someone else. Uh, but everyone else is impacted by the entry hazards quite nicely. Charizard, I have a weird set on Fire Blast, Solar Bleam, Flamethrower, and Dragon Pulse. Dragon Pulse is just for his Dragonite. Uh, I'm kind of afraid of missing Flamethrower in some of the matchups against his team. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I miss, I'm afraid of missing Fire Blast, excuse me. So Flamethrower will allow me that assurance of hitting powerfully in the sun, and I won't have to worry about missing. Solar Beam is just for those water types that he has on his team. Um, 
as long as I can hit them before they try to set up, I'll outspeed them. And then with Crawdont, the only notable move I had there is Facade, just in case I get burned by something. I also gave him just enough speed on Crawdont to outspeed um, max speed Kecleon if he decides to bring that. I can outspeed it and KO it with a knockoff, um, which will naturally catch other things like uh, Registeel that don't invest in speed, which I don't know why you would invest in speed on a Registeel. Uh, Slow King, of course. All those slower walls get outsped and and knock get their blocks knocked off. So that's what we're going to try in this preseason battle. Most notable things I hope to get out of this are figuring out if I could run this many choice items on a team. And especially without a slow, I'm not running Volt Turn, excuse me, Volt Switch on Fortress. So it's going to require a little bit more prediction on my part too. But uh, I basically have a team full of win conditions outside of the Fortress. So that's also nice. So we're going to go in and find Isaiah and it'll be battle time. All right, guys, hold on just a moment. Alrighty guys, we're back and it's time for our battle against Isaiah in the preseason. So he has decided to bring Malamar, Talonflame, Dragonite, Kecleon, Gardevoir, and Slowking. Which I am actually pretty pleased to see the absence of a few of the Pokemon he could have brought. Um, most notably, I don't have to deal with Tornadus here. I don't have to deal with Cresselia or Jirachi. Very nice. I could have brought Toxic Spikes to this matchup. And that's something I might have to see about doing in the future, is if they only have one or two poison types, consider Toxic Spikes, because here it would have put an immense amount of pressure on this uh, Regenerator Sloking, for example. But against these Pokemon right here, uh, I'm expecting him to either lead with Gardevoir and Mega Evolve. He could also lead with his Talonflame, so he could U-turn. I don't think he'll lead with um, Dragonite. He might also pull some Trick Room shenanigans since Malabar. Uh, Kecleon and Slowking are relatively slow. Um, it's not a bad idea to just keep Crawdon in the back here because he actually has a really good matchup against all these Pokemon. So, yeah, so because Crawdon can go water move, water move, water move, or dark move, water move, water move, dark move. So, Crawdon's great here. Um, Barring Talonflame, I can essentially use uh, my Charizard here too, although I have that annoying speed tie with God of Law. Um, yeah, so I don't want to lead off a Fortress. I don't like using Fortress as a lead. He, he normally ends up being a suicide lead in that respect. Um, a decent lead here is actually Scarf Aurora, since he's not carrying that many fast things. That's not a terrible lead. And I can go for... Ancient Power, which hits everything that he has neutrally or super effectively, or Freeze Dry, which does the exact same thing. So we're going to go with Scarf Auroras. And um, he actually goes with Malamar for his lead. So that kind of makes me just want to click Hyper Voice. Uh, he could switch in Slow King. Um, I think Freeze Dry. I don't have... He also might just have Super Power, which I don't really want to deal with. If he's just going to Super Power me in the face, then Dragalge is a much better switch. But then I have to deal with the possible psychic move that he might have on it. Um, Fortress is not a bad switch here either if he decides to go for superpower. And he'll take that wonderful dam damage from uh, Rocky Helmet too. Charizard isn't bad either. Uh, resisting superpower. And then I get to Mega Up. So I think I'm just going to go Charizard for now because that's a free opportunity to Mega Up. I'm assuming he's just going to superpower. He does. Great. Doesn't do that much. He does get the boost which is annoying. But now he has to decide if he wants to take this um, really powerful Fire Blast attack. He might switch into Slow King, but then after the Fire Blast, I can Solar Beam that on the following turn. Malamar can learn Rock Slide, so I hope I don't miss my Fire Blast right here, because that would suck. Uh, I've seen Scarf Malamar before too, but since his base speed I believe is only 75, he doesn't really quite hit the number that you that you really wanted to hit as a Scarfer. He decides to stay in. Here we go with the Fire Blast. I hit. Malamar is down. Fantastic. I like how that turned out. Uh, Kecleon is out. Maybe Sucker Punch. He might go for some type of type changing move here. Uh, with Kecleon out, I kind of just want to go out into Fortress. He could use Fire Punch. Uh, Kecleon gets a lot of really weird coverage moves. I could just stay in and go for Fire Blast. I don't think it'll KO Kecleon just because it might be especially defensive Kecleon. It's interesting that he didn't go into Slow King, but he might expect me to have Solar Beam too. Um, I'm not sure what he's actually going to go for here. 
I'm gonna assume he has a rock type move and go into Dragalge, because I don't think I can KO him, especially if he's Assault Vested. Uh, let's see what he goes for. He has Fake Out, which is interesting. I definitely could have gone into Fortress right there. But now I do just get to click um, Sludge Wave, as he has nothing that wants to come in on that move. Uh, wow, that did a lot of damage. I'm very pleased with that. He has Knock Off. Um, we see that he has leftovers, of course, so now that means I'm not locked into it. But that was a spec sludge wave that Kecleon just lived. That was adaptability boosted, too, so I'm pretty sure he would have lived the um, Fire Blast from Charizard, too. Uh, here, I, I just get to go for sludge wave again. There's no reason to change moves, really. He didn't he didn't bring his Registeel, which I think was his only Steel type, actually. Uh, so, yeah. Having this battle right when I get off of work here, this is not... Oh man, with, with specs I could have 2 ako would him. But I I may be able to finish him off from there with the Draco Meteor. It's kind of a roll, I'd, I'd imagine. The base power goes up pretty dramatically. Psychic will definitely take me out. I could just switch into Crawdon here. But Slowking also gets access to um, Electric or uh, Grass coverage too, so... I feel like Draco Meteor is really my best play because he can use Fire Blast, so Fortress isn't a good switch in either. Uh, so we're just going to go Draco Meteor. And that hits, and it almost takes him out. Very, very close. He goes for Focus Blast. He definitely expected me to switch into Crawdont. He missed, although it didn't matter because that would not have done very much at all to Dragalge. Uh, so I'm just going to go for Sludge Wave now because I don't want to miss another Draco. And he might switch into Gardevoir expecting a Draco. So, um, and S Kecleon again. All right, so we take out Kecleon. That Hex does matter to the extent that he would have a little bit more chip damage, but it wouldn't have KO'd me with Focus Bus if he hit, so that little overprediction there might have cost him just a little bit. Um, if I let Dragalge go down, I can't outspeed Gardevoir anyway, but I can um, hit him with Priority Aqua Jet, and I'll outspeed him with Aurora, so. Tip to let Dragalge go down here. I could also switch in Fortress on the Brave Bird, but I don't really see the point in doing so, honestly. So we're just going to go straight for Draco Meteor. Um, see if he tries to set up for something in my face. He just goes for Brave Bird. I can deal with that. We also get to see if he has an item. Okay, he might be Banded, since we don't see. Uh, I'm going to assume he's Banded. I can go out into Rhyperior and click uh, Rock Polish and end this battle right now if he's Banded. Um... If he's not banned, then he gets to go for a Will O Wisp or whatever other move he has. So, since I think he's banded, Aurora's might be a better play actually, because then I can just go for um, my Freeze Dry, which would be nice. Uh, for those of you who don't know, of course, I can't just go out and click Aqua Jet with Crawdon because his Brave Bird, which is plus one, will out prioritize my Aqua Jet at plus one because he's faster. So, that's not a very reliable way to deal with that. So Freeze Dry could happen here. Ancient Power seems really predictable. Granted, it hits everything he has left neutrally. Uh, Slow King probably got a decent amount of HP back from Regenerator, or it will rather when it comes in. It's going to be around 40%. I don't know if I can KO that, actually. Um, I think his his play here, if he is banned, he's going to go into Gardevoir. He could also go into Slow King, especially if it's Assault Vested, which means Freeze Dry is my play. So we're just going to assume he's going into Slow King and that he's banded. Let's see what he does. Oh, he is not banded. Oh, he gets the burn. No good. I definitely could have just finished him off there with, um, an it, man, that's, that's no bueno. Um, but it's good to know that he's not banded. I do want to hold on to Aurorus. I'm going to assume he's just going to attack again. Uh, the combination of recoil and rocky helmet will kill him if he, um, hits me. So, that'll work out. We're just going to go for Stealth Rock here. That way, if he decides to switch out, I'll get that goodness going on him. Uh, so, man, he might have Sharp Beak then, since since he wasn't banded. So, there's my Sturdy. Happy that I caught that before the battle. Wow, he takes a lot of damage and recoil. And, let's see here. If he tries, he's probably just going to roost up, I'd imagine. So, I'm going to get some free spikes here. Oh, he decides a U-turn, which is going to kill him. I don't agree with that at all. But I will definitely take that. So based on what he has left, um, I have Stealth Rocks up, so Dragonite's multi-scale is broken. 
that means that my best switch in is definitely Aurora's. Um, I can outspeed everything that he has left, and I will resist Dragonite's extreme speed. So definitely not bad matchup overall. Freeze Dry is definitely the play here. It should KO Slow King from 33% HP, I would imagine. I forgot about the fact that Slow King will be taking Stealth Rock damage on the way in, even though he does get Regenerator. So. I'm a man. I hope Freeze Dry is able to KO. He really should switch out. Okay, I was gonna say he should switch out into Gardevoir here, because uh, then he would take any move and be able to threaten me back. But I'm okay with that going down. Um, he has to know by now that I'm scarfed. So let's see what he goes for. He stays in. Oh, Dragonite barely lives. Ah, oh, so so that one percent chance to live. So very nice. He went for Iron Head. I don't think I've seen that as a coverage move on Dragonite in a long time. Here we just go out into um, Charizard, because that way, if he is, um, he's not. I don't. He's not Life Orb, of course. So here we just get to go for Flamethrower, because I don't want to miss. He has Aqua Jet. Wow! Didn't see that coming. I'm happy I didn't go out into Rhyperior. I forgot that Dragonite can learn Aqua Jet which gives him um, two different priority moves that he can go for, of course. Uh, that was actually, he, I, I'm happy that he went for Aqua Jet there because I definitely forgot that that could be a possibility. Uh, so this Fire Blast should seal the deal. And if not, we can go out into Rhyperior. Uh, of course, Gardevoir does get, okay, so that did not seal the deal, but Hyper Voice is not KO. Uh, Gardevoir can learn Thunderbolt, so that's something we're gonna have to watch out for in the future. And here, once again, I get to kick Flame Thor instead of going for Fire Blast. Because why risk the miss? I need a t shirt that says that. I should really be running Ember if I really, really, really don't wanna miss. But Flame Thor will definitely work. So that is the battle, guys. Preseason against uh, Isaiah. I'm able to clinch a 3 0 victory. Pretty interesting sets and um, some interesting plays on his side. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know. Um, what you guys think of having, I had Choice Scarf, and Choice Specs, and Choice Ban. I didn't get a chance to use Crawdon, but I really wanted to save him in the back. Uh, one, uh, there's quite a few ways to use Crawdon, actually, that I was researching about. So, um, if, if you've never used three different Choice items on team before, let me know if you think that's silly, uh, or if it has its place, and I will talk to you guys next time. Later.